My name is Gertrude R. Miller. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and I came to Miami Beach October 12, 1936. So actually, I've been here about 66 years. The greater part of my adult life is here, has been in Miami Beach. I've worked in the hotel industry for 35 years, and now in my retirement, I have been a docent at the Jewish Museum for the past seven years. The museum, this building opened as a museum on April 2nd, 1995. But as I was telling this gentleman from Fleischmann, New York, that at one time, Jews could not live north of Fifth Street because of a covenant in Carl Fisher's bills of sale. But then in 1926, we had a hurricane in Miami Beach. It was more violent and did more damage than Andrew in 1992. The waters from the bay surged and almost met the waters from the ocean. Miami Beach was pretty much underwater. And then in 1929, we had the stock market crashed, and even though you are visitors are young people, the stock market crash of 1929 may, is in the pages of history. People lost their shirts. And who was going to come down to Florida, to Miami Beach, and buy Carl Fisher's water-soaked land? And so Carl Fisher, not a Jew, was a shrewd businessman, and he decided that he would sell some of his property north of Fifth Street to some good Hebrews. And that's how the, the push north started, where Jewish people could start buying land north of Fifth Street. Wow. However, prior to that, they all settled in this neighborhood. We had Jewish markets, we had Jewish bakeries, Jewish dentists, Jewish boarding houses, and the need for a house of worship arose. And so in 1928, I'm repeating myself, but we're doing this for the gentleman from Queens. Uh, in 1928, they built the little building next door, which is still an active synagogue, an Orthodox synagogue. And by the time 1936 rolled around, one Jew told another of the opportunities in Florida, and so they flocked here. They all came here to, to go into business or to partake of our wonderful climate. And so in 1936, this building was built. Both buildings were on the historic register. Uh, this building, in 1940, the congregation rose enough money, enough money was raised to put in these stained glass windows. We have almost 80 stained glass windows, all of them made in Miami, and these are all the original. The Bema, the pulpit, are you Jewish, sir? Yes. The pulpit, known as a Bema, is made of Carrera marble, and it was designed by Rabbi Moses Meshelov, who was the rabbi at Temple Beth Jacob. This was known as Beth Jacob Synagogue. He was the rabbi for 18 years. And the architect of the synagogue was a man, a well-known Art Deco architect, Henry Hohauser. Henry Hohauser is known as the father of Art Deco. He designed over 100 apartment houses and hotels in the Art Deco area giving you a good <laughs> resume. During what time frame? During the uh, 30s and 40s. And Henry Hohauser was a member of the congregation, and so he designed this beautiful building. But he did not quite get how the rabbi wanted the bima. So Rabbi Meshelov took two cakes of soap, and he whittled the design that you currently see. And Henry Hohauser followed this, and it is beautiful. People come and, and they marvel at it. There are a few synagogues that I know of that have beautiful white marble beamers. I have been a docent, a volunteer at the museum since its inception. I was here when they cut the ribbon, the mayor of Miami. What year was that? Na April 2nd, not only the year, the date. April 2nd, 1995. Mm -hmm. We had a big street fair celebration. 
And after two years, this was a $2 million project. Mm. And after two years of work, we finally were ready. From where the money came? To uh, where did the that? money come from? From grants, from the city of Miami Beach, mm. from the state of Florida, and from private donations. On the wall in the lobby, you will see a plaque of the people who guaranteed the loan that we took from the city of Miami Beach that they would be responsible if we reneged. You will see their names on a plaque. Oh. Then, uh, behind the desk where Suzanne, the attractive lady who took your money, there is what we call the bridge. And there were private donations from people like myself. I bought a brick for $1,000 to help in the building of this edifice. I mean, I have seen Miami Beach as an all-Jewish city. I've lived here 66 years. I've seen it as an all-Jewish city. We had a Jewish mayor. We had a Jewish chief of police. We had a Jewish fire chief. And our commissioners gradually became Jewish. We had Jewish bakeries on Washington Avenue, Jewish kosher butchers, and the hotels, Jewish operated, Jewish owned. In fact, Ocean Drive, have you been to Ocean Drive mm -hmm. yet? Or walked Ocean sure. Drive? Those hotels that you see there were built in the 30s and 40s. Henry Hohauser, who built this synagogue, he was the father of Art Deco. Many of the hotels along Ocean Drive were built by Henry Hohauser. But I tell people that these hotels on Ocean Drive and on Collins Avenue, all built by Jewish developers, and long after we are all gone, it will remain that the Jews were the foundation of the Art Deco movement that's given us worldwide publicity. So I say I have seen Miami Beach as an all Jewish city, but I've also seen the changes. Tell us about the changes. The changes in 1960, 59, Fidel Castro came to power. And little by little, the Cuban people Can came. Over. At first, they came legally a lot and later on illegally. But I remember in the early days when I worked in the hotels in 48, 49, they came over in the summer. The summer, this town was filled with Cuban vacationers. They came with empty suitcases and they bought like there was no tomorrow. They hmm. bought electrical appliances, they bought refrigerators, they bought stoves, everything to take back to the island. And it was, it was no problem. Yeah, let them Take yes, everything was free. And then, of course, there became restrictions, the embargo with people. But most of these people were merchants and had stores in Havana and elsewhere. And they saw the handwriting in the wall. So when they came over, a good number of them deposited money in our banks. Mm. So when they walked out of Cuba and took a freedom flight, some of them had money mm. in the bank. Mm. Others just came with the clothes on their back. Hmm. They had to leave everything like behind. Parents. And those people, those people became dishwashers in the restaurants. They, they became garbage collectors. They worked in cafeterias. They were valets. And some of our million, Cuban American millionaires today are those who came over and had to work from scratch. We give them credit. Mm. We give them credit because just like the Jews of Eastern Europe came over my here. My father. All right, my grandfather grandfathers came over from Eastern Polish Russia. They worked hard. They didn't become millionaires, but they were middle oh. class. But some of these people have sent their children to university. They treasure education, just like the Eastern European Jews who migrated to America. So, so as I say, we give them credit for what they have established. They have become merchants, bankers, a construction line. So we give them credit because we have a film here about immigrants, and one of them is, tells us about the Jewish contribution. And they have made contributions to the museum. There's a special plaque honoring some of them, and we're going to have a special exhibit, I don't know what, when it's, the date is scheduled, honoring the Jewish Cuban exiles who have contributed so much. And they also have synagogues. There's a Cuban Hebrew synagogue on 17th Street near Lenox Avenue. Hmm. I mean, I recommend if you want to, they conduct their services in Hebrew and Spanish. Hmm. Wow. No, so as I say, if you want a taste of the various modes of worship, right. we right. have a Sephardic synagogue on uh, 
71st Street, Temple to Synagogue, Temple Moses, I think. What, what about recent, more recently than the Cuban influx? What changes have occurred in, uh, what we have especially had, South Beach, as far as we have, we have not only had a Cuban influx, we've had an influx of people from Haiti, mm -hmm. Central America, the islands, big Jamaican influx. Um, as I say, we've, we've had every minority you could possibly think of to the point where we Jewish people are fast becoming a minority. Mm. There was a time, as I told you, we had, we, people would say that we had more Jews here than in Tel Aviv mm. or Los Angeles mm. or, or New York. But that is best. We are becoming a minority. There are more Hispanics in Miami Beach in Miami than there are, than there Right. Then there are Caucasians. What about the hotels on uh, Ocean Drive? Uh, they were like rehabilitated, weren't they? Uh... Uh, rehabilitated to this point. From my point of view, they were rehabilitated not so much to serve as hotels, but as uh, restaurants, right. restaurants and clubs. Right. There are, I don't know how many rent rooms. So a few do. The Edison, I know, rents rooms, and, but the Breakwater is known for their clubs. Uh, all, all along. The Avalon has a fish named Avalon. <laughs> so as I say, it's more a club and restaurant area. It's a beautiful area and, and the property along Ocean Drive is, uh, I don't think you can touch it. Uh, you know the story of Johnny Versace, mm. the Italian designer. Yes. He had a home on Ocean Drive and between 11th and 12th Street. He bought two pieces of property and he actually created an Italian palace, furnished it with the finest of china and glassware and fabrics. And then one morning he went to the news cafe for breakfast, as was his habit, and to pick up a paper. And he was killed on the steps upon his return. His family recently sold the house and property for over $19 million. That, that's a that's a whopper. Back to Miami Beach and the museum. We opened in 1995, April 2nd, and on the steps of the museum was our mayor and Rabbi Meshulov, who is currently in Chicago. He was the rabbi who designed the Bema and these wonderful stained glass windows. He came in from Chicago for the opening of the museum. And we also had a man called Sanford Ziff, Z-I-F-F. -F. His name is on above the doorway. And Mr. Ziff is a philanthropist, a former, you should know this, and a former optometrist. And he is the founder of the Sunglass Hut kiosk that you see on the malls and right here on Collins Avenue and 8th Street. Mr. Ziff pledged a million and a half dollars toward the museum. X amount of dollars now, and then so much per year, and the balance are upon his demise. His name is above that. He said when they cut the ribbon, and he made a short speech also, he said, when you go in, I want you to say hello to my Bubba and Zeta, Mr. and Mrs. Kazan, and I point that out to the people as I take them around. His grandparents lived in this area and davened in this shul, so that was one of the impetus for him to make this contribution. And I always tell people, and I'll tell you, if you would like to donate a million dollars to us, we'll put your name up too. I wish I had. <laughs> Sounds good to me. But it always gets a smile. It always gets a smile. And we always try to inject a little humor into our presentation. I always tell people about, what, it, what is this, uh, Philip Liebman. Mm -hmm. Philip Liebman, they want to know who was Philip Liebman. Philip Liebman was the president of the shul when this building opened. He wasn't the president of the little shul next door, which was the forerunner of this, but he was the president, the first president of this shul, Philip Liebman. He was a banker and a philanthropist. His son, Marcy Liebman, became mayor of Miami Beach. He was a big man, and how, how he ever got the votes, I'll never know. <laughs> but I want you to know when people advised him 
that he was elected mayor of Miami Beach. He said, this is the pinnacle of my success. Ah. <laughs> Another time, he was vice president of his father's bank, and I went up to him in 1950 when the Theater of Performing Arts, now known as the Jackie Gleason Theater, mm -hmm. was having its opening, 1950, and we had arranged for Reza Stevens of the Metropolitan Opera to be at the first concert. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mr. Liebman, Ms. Mr. Mayor, we would like you to underwrite and sponsor this concert. Reza Stevens, the coloratura soprano of the Metropolitan Opera, is going to be the featured artist. He said, what? Colored? Uh. <laughs> I don't think. He, he did pledge a substantial amount of money, but I mean, he was not a, an educated man. What, what was Jackie Gleason's connection with Miami? All right, in 1967, 68, um, Jackie Gleason was persuaded to film his honeymooners at the Theater of Performing Arts. It brought a lot of publicity to Miami Beach. Is that still around, that theater? The Sorry, theater? Yes, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. Right. Gertrude, I have to interrupt. The bus is here. Okay. To be, you're, you're welcome to be part of the tour. Well, thanks you very know. much, Gertrude. It's been very, very interesting and informative, and you have a lot of wonderful stories to Thank tell. Thank you. We appreciate Thank you taking the time to spend with us today. You're very, very welcome. Thank you.